What's up, you guys? I'm over here with my partner, Chris Welch, over here. We're gonna do a quick recap. There was an old house here, we tore it down. Now it's all framed, there's gonna be five brand new townhouse. And when Chris and I are gonna show you guys, what are we doing now? You know, some of the things that's happening right now on site, real time, and we're gonna actually share with you guys. If you ever build this kind of stuff, these are the things you wanna look out for. Mm -hmm. Everybody always asks this question, Chris. When you find a piece of land, how do you know what to build on the property. Everybody's talking about single family, because there was a single family here before. Yep. You know, keep it, put an 80 unit backyard. Right, right. Sometimes that's not the highest best use. Yeah. Right, why do we end up building a five unit versus a house and an 80 unit or a four unit, for example? Right. This is one of the questions everybody always wanna know. You gotta just start with this base zoning. And yep. this one, even though they're just single family houses around here, um, the zoning here is an LR zoning. So that's a low rise zoning. So this allows us to do more than just a single family with an ADU or DADU on it. Yep. So um, it comes down to the density factor, how many can we put on here, and how small do we want to make them. Uh, in this case, we did look at doing five to six units. Right. We kind of played around with uh, different orientation of the site. Big factor for us is always parking. Mm -hmm. We're standing here in the alley on this one. We've got good parking access from the alley. We don't like to build uh, in the city without parking for at least half of the units is yeah. kind of general rule of thumb. We had a choice to do six. Yes. The problem with that, you guys, is that it would just shrink the unit down. Yep. And we weren't sure if that was going to be the most sellable in price or the most sellable when we get all the most uh, rentable for the highest rent. Yeah. Right? And the size of the rooms inside all also become a factor yeah. and the number of rooms. If we want to get three bedrooms, which is, you know, really the, the target for us, we like to have three bedrooms in rental units or sale both. Sometimes we have to go down to a two bedroom unit. Yeah. And if we did six, we probably end up with all two bedrooms yeah, and, and two bed. smaller units. Yeah. And so we decided to stay with a little bit bigger unit, get some three bedroom configurations. This tri unit right now is pretty much all framed out. Yep. The duplex is halfway done. Right. When someone's building, what should they think about when they frame it? Framing is an important aspect because it's really the structure of the building, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to look for a good framer. It's got good quality control within yeah. their own company so that they're getting things built correctly right. and you're not ending up with a poor product that doesn't meet or pass inspection. How often do someone should expect their framing work or yeah, anything? Well, well, we have a superintendent who's out on site on a daily basis. Yep. And so we like to check our sites daily. During the framing stage, you want to check their progress. You want to look at their quality control, make sure it's meeting your standards. And you, you, know, you want to report that right away. If something's not meeting your standards, you want to address it right away. Don't let it snowball and become a bigger issue by not addressing it. Right. So after we get done from framing now, what's next after framing? So we'll get a framing uh, inspection on all the hardware, shear walls, structural components and then our plumber will come in and he'll start running all the plumbing piping. We we'll call that rough end stage of plumbing. Yep. So ahead of the plumber coming in, we always go throughout our building and we mark out the cabinetry, toilet, shower locations. We wanna make sure that not only does he know where we want them, but we wanna make sure that they fit properly based on the choices and selections we made for the building. And not just in the bathroom, that's literally for the whole entire house, you know, from kitchen, everything, right? Yes, we lay out the cabinets in the kitchen, we know where the sink is going, we figure out the center lines, all that stuff is figured out ahead of time so he can be efficient when he comes in to do his plumbing. For a uh, plumber to pretty much start and finish plumbing with the whole unit before installation going next. Yeah, the plumber will probably insul or, uh, install this one unit in maybe three days for a rough end, um, and then he'll move to the next unit and the next unit. So in this triplex, it'll probably take about seven days or so, maybe seven or eight days. This depends on how it flows through. What does it mean by rough end? So most people might not understand what that means. Yeah, rough end is we're putting in the pipes, everything that goes inside the walls, and then we're stubbing things out of the walls for your sink connections and things like that. And then the next phase will be what they call finish stage. Right. And that'll be later on at the end of the project when we come back to install sinks and fixtures and all the shiny, pretty stuff. Now after all the roughing for the plumbing, Chris, what's after that? So after plumbing, we'll send in the uh, mechanical, which yep. is your HVAC, your electrician, and if you have fire sprinklers, you'll have to install fire sprinklers. And then we'll be ready to insulate the building and start going for drywall inspections. What does someone gotta look for when they do roughing for all this stuff? Of course, I know we're talking about doing all this, but I wanna make sure that they understand what to look for 
when they go through this. Yeah, good subs, good relationships, people that know what they're doing and know the product, that's really important. A lot of it you can do yourself. You can watch where the electrician's putting outlets and light switches mm -hmm. and light fixtures. Make yeah. sure they get in the center of the room. If they're supposed to be in the center, make sure they get evenly spaced. If they're mm -hmm. supposed to be spaced out. Some of the simple stuff easily is, you know, managed yourself and every electrician will make a mistake. You can catch that stuff, you can fix it before you get too far into it and have to repair it later. And that's why it's important if you're doing it yourself or you work with a good reliable builder, they gotta have frequent inspection to go check on these projects. Otherwise, by the time you inspect on it, they already got everything roughed in and the switches is literally somewhere, not even in the right, or sometimes behind the door. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, uh, but that's what you gotta look for, okay? So then after all that, the insulation go in, correct? Yeah, yep, yeah. and we'll get an inspection on all those rough-ins, we'll hang the sheetrock, and we'll get going to paint and cabinetry and move on to the finishing stages. You said now finishing's coming up, so tell me what finishing means. Yeah, so after we get the drywall in, we'll paint it, we'll start bringing in all the millwork, and doors, cabinetry, get all that installed, and then we'll do a paint on the whole trim package, and then finishing. Yeah. All the electrical, plumbing, mechanical trims, and all the pretty stuff gets to go in. Railing, lighting, Final, everything. Finalize it with uh, cabinet or uh, mirrors and shower doors, carpentry, and shelving, and you're good to go. How long does it take typically to build, let's say, a single family home or even a, a, a four unit townhouse site, or even a five unit townhouse, what we do right now, like time frame? You could be in a permitting cycle for a five unit building like this for anywhere from probably seven or eight months all the way up to maybe a year, depending on how com complex it is, right. how fast your consultants respond, how fast the city responds. There's lots of variables in it, so I would always factor in somewhere between seven to 12 months on something of this size. And that's just for permits, you guys, okay? Yes. So all you buy, I was like, oh my God, I wanna do new construction, but you don't realize the time and the money, right? Uh, it takes to actually put one of these projects together. So you're a year into permitting. Yep. What does it take to build this five unit boat house out? Yeah, so then once you get to construction, uh, this project here is probably gonna run us about 10 to 12 months. It's kind of in that, that, yep. that plus or minus a one year type of project. Um, a lot of factors going to that on supply, yeah. what's available, and uh, delays on appliances have been really difficult. All those kinds of things will factor into your schedule yeah. as well. And a lot of people don't realize this. We we paid almost a million dollars for this land, rounded up to a million dollars, 900 some thousand. And the bank usually went 25% of the land. Right. So you figure out a million dollars, 25% is 250,000. And then you gotta go get plans and permits. How much you got to plan and permit, survey, soft, you know, all this stuff right here. Yeah, yeah. So we'll put in another about thirty to fifty thousand dollars for permitting on a site like this, and it, you know it, per it, unit, per unit times five, times five. So you could be another two hundred thousand, maybe even two fifty into right. a site like this for your permitting. This is why you gotta have money to play new construction, not just go raise money from investors and think the bank's gonna give you enough money to pay the note every month. But if your interest rates are rising and it's eating up at your interest quick, like Chris said, you just have to start chipping out. You have to start paying with your own money. Thank God we're not there yet, but we gotta move this project quick. So this is the non-sexy side of this whole thing. Yeah, and a lot of people might not realize that you know, interest rates are not locked in on it's a construction not, it's loan. Not. It's not like a typical mortgage. When we sign a construction loan, we're signing up for an interest rate that floats on the prime rate. So it can move. When the rate moves, we pay more. Right. But, you know, bigger risk, there's bigger reward. So we're projecting probably somewhere about $125,000 per profit per unit times five, you do the math. So there is definitely risk playing this game. New construction, bigger, right? But there's always reward. But you better have some reserve, you better have some money to play this game because Man, you can get wiped out literally one project. Yeah. All right, so when the building is done, you guys, our intention right now is to keep that five unit row house, just like we kept these five units right here, as a rental property. But with the interest right now that's so crazy, we're praying by the time we get done, it's gonna drop down to a recent amount of, you know, rate, so we can actually keep the property. Right. If not, we're gonna sell the property. Or maybe sell half and keep the other half. But that's our plan. So here's a little, small little tip this for you guys. Soon, Chris and I are putting together a course on how to actually rehab houses and build new construction from, from A to U to multi-unit or even apartment building from A to Z on how to do the whole thing, right, uh, for everybody. So soon if you guys want to learn how to do this stuff that we're talking about, right, it's coming, baby. Stay tuned. See you then, all right?